Will you read responsively with me the call to worship? What shall we return to you, O God, for all of your bounty to us? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will give you thanksgiving and call on your name in the presence of all the people. Please join me in the opening prayer. Gracious God, you shelter your people amid their distress. You provide them a haven of security and rest. You bring comfort for those with affliction and hear the pleas of their persecution. You cause your money to flow like living water. Your benevolence stretches to the ends of the earth. We come in praise of all your goodness and lift our voices with thanks for your care. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38, and from chapter 10, verse 7. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Good morning, kids. This is part two of how M&Ms are like Christians. Last week we talked about how M&Ms have the letter M on them and they are marked and how we as Christians are marked with the Holy Spirit. This week is how M&Ms come in a variety of colors, just like us. 
God has created each of us as unique in many ways, too. Although we are all called to ministry, we are each uniquely gifted, have different backgrounds and different personalities. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6, it says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them, in all of them, in men and women. Let's think about it. We come in a variety of colors, just like M&Ms. Red M&Ms, red, they are red hot, bold, and competitive. Yellow, we are friendly, positive, creative, and encouraging. Blue is calm and dependable and solid. Green can be considered analytical, organized, practical, and decisive. Orange is assertive and outgoing. And brown is warm, inviting, trustworthy, and wholesome. God has a way of blending our backgrounds, personality, and spiritual gifts into unique individual ministers of, for his kingdom. Let us pray. Dear Lord, be with these children this week. Help them remember that we might look different, but we are all called to God with the same ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We do thank our liturgist for reading our scripture this afternoon um, from Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 35 through verse 38, and verse 10, and chapter 10, verse number 7. Let me read you of this morning, verse uh, 9, chapter 9 through 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into the harvest. harvest. Uh, chapter 10, verse 7. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. These are the words that form the basis of our message to you on this afternoon or this morning, wherever you are listening. Uh, and the title of our message today is Somebody Has to Do It. How many of you know that's the truth? Somebody has to do it. Let's pray. God, we do pray, God, that you we would see ourselves as that somebody. That somebody that God can use. That somebody that God is sending forth. That somebody that is obeying God's call. And so, God, we do pray that these words on this afternoon would stir the hearts of your people. We pray, God, that it would stir them into action and that they would be busy about your business. God, time out for talking about it, but it's now time that we be about it. So, God, please send harvesters into the harvest, for the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. 
God, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, to the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Lord, draw me near, near, God, to thee, to the cross where thou hast died. God, draw me near. Nearer God to thee, to thy precious bleeding side. And even again, God, give me the gift of preaching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There's a little story that I picked up along the way entitled, Whose Job Is It Anyway? Now, this story is about four people named, one named Everybody, the second named Somebody, the third person named Anybody, and the fourth nobody. There was an important job to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that, because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. The sto this story may seem to be confusing, but the message is clear. No one took the responsibility, so nothing got accomplished. It's a story that plays out often in organizations and churches, anywhere there's a culture that lacks accountability. How do I, as a pastor, get people to, to take the responsibility that God has calling, calling them and commissioning them to make disciples? We keep waiting for somebody to get, to get to work and for the work to be done. But at the end of the day, it's nobody that does it. If you are not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. We must concentrate on solutions and not focus our primary attention on problems. To avoid having your church become everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody, committing to become a member that takes this responsibility for your own life and call that God has placed upon your life. Don't let anybody or everybody or nobody stop you from doing what you need to do to create the kind of church that you would like your church to be. All of us can reminisce in our past. We can look back in the history of our churches and we can tell stories about how there was an overflow. And we had so many people that attended our church that we needed to expand. As a result of us expanding, we uh, acquired more space and we made sure there was more seating availability and so we had to make adjustments to accommodate all of the people that was attending our church in times past but if most of us are honest many of our churches do not look like the church of the past there are less people in attendance and more vacant pews and we are not at all using up the space that we once needed in our sanctuary. The truth is the matter is God is calling all of us to do kingdom building. We are all being called to make disciples. We are to win the lost at any cost. We're to go into the hedges and the highways and we're to reach out to the unchurched. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, which is called the Great Commission, it says in verse number eight, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. The most important part of this passage is Scripture, verse number 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you to do. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Christian discipleship is much more than a program or a series of steps. Rather, it's a continual process of growth. A person commits his his or her entire life to Jesus becomes dedicated to learning his ways while also 
going, sharing, and teaching the the way the ways of Jesus to others. The Great Commission in Matthew 28 are Jesus' final words to his disciples. And it tells us how to walk the way of faith. Jesus' final words are not only to go, but to make disciples, to baptize them and to teach them. I want to tell you a story of a very familiar actor many of you might know by the name of Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey played in many uh, comedic movies. One such one is Bruce Almighty, where he was complaining to God about something. So God decided to let him play God for a day. If you had all the power in the world to do anything you wanted to do, what would it be? If for some reason God uh, allowed you to walk in his shoes for just one day, how would you move about? What would you do? One of the things that's near and dear to the heart of God is persons, the condition of persons' souls. In Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill, fulfill his promise of some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that God gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in them should not perish, but have everlasting life. Salvation and disciple making is at the very heart of God. It's the purpose for which God sent his Son. He sent his Son into a dark world to save us from our sins. He was laid in a manger, but he one day journeyed to a cross, and there he died for you and me. Therefore, we are to go and make disciples from all nations by baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and by teaching them to keep all the instructions that Jesus has given us to teach. When someone says to you, let's go, now it depends upon how you're feeling and where they want you to go. They may say, let's go fishing. Let's go camping. Let's go shopping. Let's go out to a restaurant and sit down and have a good meal. Many of you would uh, determine and evaluate that this is something that you wanted to do. But most of you would be glad to accept the invitation and would go on and participate in whatever event the person was inviting you to do. Jesus tells us to go. He tells us to go today on a mission. The sinful nature said, no, I'm good, or I'm not ready. And I can be, and it can be very challenging. It can be difficult, but it also can be very exciting and rewarding as well. The neat thing is that we don't need a car to go on God's mission. We don't even need legs in some cases. We can simply use our mouth on our telephones and our fingers on our keyboards. We must be creative in the way that we reach out to others and share the good news of the gospel. Old and young alike can go do this journey. Go is as simple as a telephone or computer or just merely holding a conversation over your fence to your neighbor. All of us know someone who does not who does not know the Lord. If we wait for somebody and anybody and everybody, it ends up nobody will tell that person about the Lord. If nobody, anybody, and everybody else do not take the time, we must be the somebody that goes out of our way to share the good news of the gospel about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. This is a journey worth going on. People's eyes can become open to see that they are God's special creation and, and, and that God's Son re can redeem them. People are, can be saved from hell and despair. The Great Commission. Now, the dictionary combines the word 
con defines the word commission as the act of committing or entrusting a person group with sub supervisory power or authority. Or it says an authoritative order, charge, or direction. Another definition is authority granted for a particular act or function. As we read in our text, Jesus said that all power and authority was given it un unto him. Uh, but once he was given it unto him, he gave it unto us. He told us to go. And so it, this great commission is an authoritative order, a charge, or, or, or to go in a particular direction. It's an authority granted for particular action and functions. Jesus gave every Christian follower these marching orders that we must be obedient in making disciples. Male, female, young, old, rich, poor, we have all been given the mandate to tell somebody else about the saving grace of Jesus. When was the last time you told somebody that Jesus saves? When did you tell somebody that Jesus died on the cross that we might have life and have life more abundantly? When was the last time that you came out of your comfortable place and went to a place where someone needed to hear the gospel? Jesus gave one primary command, make disciples which means we are to teach and train people to follow and obey Christ. When he said go, he means to start in your small circle and then branch out to the world. He went further on and said baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit means to win them to Christ and lead them to be members of God's church. He also instructs us to teach, begin helping them to build their lives, on the foundation of the word of God. So church, we have our marching orders. Now, what are you going to do? Are you simply going to talk about it and hold conversations about the subject, about how your church attendance is much less than it was years ago? Or are you going to be about what God has called you to do, to make this, go and make disciples? Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all the things that Jesus taught them. If you are a follower of Jesus, you are to tell others about him. This faith that we had was not intended for us to just keep it for ourselves, but for us to noise it abroad, that all would know that a dying Savior died for our sins and rose that we can have a newness of life. Anybody, nobody, and everybody may not be willing to obey this call of the Great Commission, but you must be the somebody that is willing to stand up and carry out the call to work and to, and to carry out the commission of the Lord. The harvest truly is plenty, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send laborers into the harvest. Chapter 10, verse number 7, and said, As you go, preach, saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Somebody has to do it. Will that somebody be you? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.